Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Divan and the topic of the lecture today is aspergillosis. In this lecture, we're going to talk about different aspects of aspergillosis. We're going to talk about what aspergillosis is. We're going to talk about its risk factor, its pathogenesis, its um, outcomes and clinical manifestations, its treatment modalities and how do we go for the prophylaxis. So first of all, we'll start with the risk factors of the aspergillosis that what are the risk factors which will promote or which will de-promote the development of this kind of pathology. In this, we're going to talk about all of this, how neutropenia, how immunosuppression, how glucocorticoids, how pulmonary diseases, and how neutrophil or phagocyte dysfunction leads to this kind of pathology or promotes this pathology. Next round, we're going to talk about the pathogenesis of it. We're going to talk about how these spores, how these particles get inside of your, our lungs, how they disseminate and what kind of manifestation does they have if there's any risk factor present might that be because of uh, glucocorticoids use or might that be because of neutrophil problems or dysfunction next one we'll talk about types of disease it contains we're going to talk about what invasive pulmonary aspergillosis is what are chronic manifestations of the disease and what allergic manifestations of the diseases are Next, I'm going to talk about clinical features of different organs, which are uh, the primary target of uh, aspergillosis. We're going to talk about brain. We're going to talk about what clinical features will it present with, to you with, uh, in the cases of brain. We're going to talk about how brain abscesses are formed. We're going to talk about hemorrhagic infarction. We're going to talk about meningitis and chronic form. We're going to talk about gainomatosis and we're going to talk about meningitis. And we'll talk about other organ systems too. Like we're going to talk about what eye manifestations will look like. We're going to talk about the skin manifestations. We're going to talk about uh, the pulmonary manifestation we'll present with. And next on, we're going to talk about the heart manifestations. Next on, once we've done with all the clinical manifestations, we'll go for the serology. We'll go for the diagnostic modalities. First of all, we'll go for the history. Then we'll go for the examination of the patient. Then we'll go for the cultures and serologies. In the serology, we're going to talk about aspergillin antibody test, aspergillin antigen testing, and then PCR. Once we have confirmed our diagnosis based on histopathology, based on the cultures, based on the serology, we'll definitely go for uh, we'll definitely go for the definite treatment, and with the culture results, and with the history, examinations, and all of these results will reconcile and lead us to our further and confirmative diagnosis, and then. We're going to treat the patient and after treating the, treating the patient or in, in some cases before treating the patient, we're going to talk about the prophylactic treatment, that how prophylactic treatment will be given and what kind of uh, prophylactic options do we have for the patients who are already immunocompromised or taking any immunosuppressive drugs. Next time we're going to talk about the outcomes of standard therapy and the itraconazole therapy that we prefer. We're going to talk about why itraconazole is preferable to standard therapy. And then we're going to talk about how itraconazole is given afterwards. So for watching this complete lectures and the variety of lectures, which vary from anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology to medicine and surgery, there are thousands of lectures which are present. Uh, please subscribe to skyra.com. It also has a free trial for you so you can get accustomed to it. So that's all. Thank you for watching skyra.com.